That was a beautiful... Uh, for those of you who don't know, during Orthros on Sundays, there are 11 accounts of the resurrection from the Gospels that we read in a cycle. So we read the first one and then the second one from week to week. And that cycle repeats throughout the year. Sometimes it gets a little bit, uh, it's taken a little bit out of order around the time of Pascha because there's certain readings that we read to commemorate specific feast days. Like when we commemorate the Myrrh-bearing women, we specifically read the passage related to their going to the tomb early in the morning and finding the stone all the way. But there's these passages that we read, and then what's called the Doxastikon, which is the hymn after glory, and we sing glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit during Orthros, during the praises, the one we were just singing, is always, for most of the year, related to those gospel readings. And so today we read about Luke and Cleopas on the road to Emmaus and how they encounter the risen Lord there and they invite him to stay with them and have supper and they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. And so the hymn that we just sang is about that. And that happens every week. The hymn is related to the reading from the gospel. Many of you aren't here early enough <laughs> to hear the gospel reading and so you wouldn't know that there's a connection being made there. Also what's called the Exopostolarium or the Hymn of Light. Um, the first one that we sing on Sundays is always related to that resurrectional gospel reading. And, but in this passage today, this hymn today about Luke and Cleopas, it's really beautiful because it speaks about how wonderful and amazing the judgments of God are that Peter just went to the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying by themselves. And the hymn interprets that as that that was enough for him to begin to wonder and believe in the resurrection. But then for Luke and Cleopas, the Lord meets them on the road. And so the hymn says, um, it speaks about how Marvelous and wise are your judgments, O Christ, because you permitted Peter to perceive your resurrection when he saw the linen cloths by themselves, whereas with Luke and Cleopas you walked and talked. But while you talked with them, you did not immediately reveal yourself. So think about that. <clears throat> How unique and specific and adapted to the person to look and play across the Lord as being. And also, he's careful not to reveal himself because what happens afterwards is when they are sitting at table, I want you to think about the Eucharist, when they are sitting at table and he raises the bread and blesses and breaks it, this is when he reveals himself to them. They're able to see and understand. He's already been telling them about all of the things in the scriptures concerning himself and opening their minds to understand. But it's in that moment of fellowship, of breaking the bread together, that they know him, that they recognize him, that they truly see him. And so the Lord arranged all things even in his resurrection, all of these different accounts, the way he revealed himself to his disciples, he did it in a specific way in order to teach us so that we would understand, so that we would know that it is in the Holy Eucharist, it is in the breaking of the bread and receiving the body and blood of Christ that ultimately we know him in truth. And that just explaining the scriptures and talking about them is not enough. It needs to go further. There needs to be a step further. So it's a beautiful thing. And I hope that we always, as Orthodox believers, are able to enter more deeply into the rich um, 
tradition of the hymnody of our church, in the way that it interprets scriptures and reveals the meaning of passages and different things so that we can enter more deeply into the life of Christ. Amen.